suppose you have a string, tighten it and pin one of its ends. Let's say there is a pencil at the other end of the string. If you draw a line with the pencil while keeping the string tight, you'll draw a circle. Now let's start again with the string, but this time we'll pin both of its ends. We'll use a pencil to tighten the string. Again we'll draw a line while keeping the string tight. This time we drew another curved line which we call an ellipse. The ellipse itself will depend on the length of the string. If we make the string longer, the ellipse will be bigger. And if we make the string shorter, the ellipse will be smaller. It will also depend on where the ends of the string are. The closer we move them, the ellipse will look more and more like a circle. In fact, if we move them so that they coincide with each other, the ellipse will become a circle. And a circle is often considered a special case of an ellipse. But if we move them as far apart as we can, we'll get a line segment. However, a line segment is not considered a special case of an ellipse. The two points where we pin the ends of the string will denote by F1 and F2 and we call them the focal points of an ellipse. Let's denote the point on the ellipse by P. Now F1P plus F2P is the same for all points P on the ellipse because it's equal to the length of the string. So F1P plus F2P is constant and for now we'll say that that's equal to some value d. So an ellipse is uniquely defined with two focal points f1 and f2 and the length d. And it's the set of all points p such that f1p plus f2p is equal to d. And we'll later see where this length d appears on the ellipse itself. But first let's introduce some commonly used terms. We already said that F1 and F2 are the focal points. The midpoint O of F1 F2 is the center of the ellipse. The line through F1 and F2 intersects the ellipse at two points, V1 and V2, and we call them the vertices of the ellipse. The perpendicular bisector of F1 F2 also intersects the ellipse at two points, v3 and v4, and we call them the co-vertices of the ellipse. The distance from the center to a vertex is denoted by A and it's called the semi-major axis. The distance between the center and the co-vertex is denoted by B and it's called the semi-minor axis and the distance between the center and the focal point is denoted by C and it's called the linear eccentricity of an ellipse. If we go back to the definition of an ellipse, we can now express D in terms of A, B and C. In fact, we only need A to express D. First, note that the length of V1, V2 is equal to 2 times A. Now, by the definition of an ellipse, for any point P on the ellipse, F1P plus F2P is equal to D. And in particular, that is true when P coincides with vertices V1 and V2. Let's say first that P coincides with V2. Now, F1P is the same as F1V2 and F2P is the same as F2V2. So, by the definition, F1V2 plus F2V2 is equal to D. Similarly, when P coincides with V1, we get that F1V1 plus F2V1 is equal to D. Now, we'll add these two expressions. First, we'll add the two leftmost terms. 
if we look at the image, we see that F1V2 plus F1V1 adds up to V1V2. Similarly for the other two terms, they also add up to V1V2. We have that V1V2 plus V1V2 is equal to D plus D, which means that V1V2 is equal to D. But D was the length of our string, so the distance between vertices is equal to the length of the string. We also had that V1V2 is equal to 2A, which means that D is equal to 2A. We'll substitute 2A instead of D in the definition, and that way we get the definition of an ellipse which we'll use in the future.